Jonathan Sachadotti, I-24 News, my correspondent in London. Jonathan, good morning to you. When it comes to, you know, de-radicalization, de is there an understanding, do you believe, in Europe nowadays that there is also pro a problem with the Muslim community? And a second component of that question would be specifically in the UK. I mean, the Muslim community there is actually very strong. I mean, have there been already reaction to any kind of measures that are being, are being put in place or will be put in place supposedly in the future in a place like the UK? This is a huge problem for Europe and for the UK especially, but all over the continent. And we saw yesterday that Eric Pickles, the community secretary, has issued a letter to all the mosques in the country saying that the imams there had to help in this effort to so set huh. what they call de-radicalize people. Right. He asked that they should be able to preach the message to their communities that people can be Muslims and proud Britons. Now, the reaction to that was actually very negative from a large part of the Muslim community, as you might have expected. Uh, an organization called the Muslim Council of Britain, uh, which some believe represents Muslim community feeling in the country, many don't believe it does, has complained that he's singling out Muslims and that he is also suggesting that somehow Muslims don't currently feel British. So there's this ongoing battle over that. David Cameron has weighed in and said that he believes that the Muslim Council has some sort of problem if they think there was anything wrong with that letter. And so now there is clearly a grappling with this issue that we haven't seen before. And unfortunately, it took those dreadful events in Paris in order to make this conversation happen so prominently on the public stage. Now, on the public stage, and one, one more thing about the UK, and you correct me if I'm wrong, I've also been uh, hearing um, uh, you know, news that there's also a problem with extraditing when it comes to, um, uh, you know, UK doesn't extradite, I think, citizens, correct me if I'm wrong, um, if they're on terror list or something to that effect, but changing also laws within the UK, as well as discussions about more precautions in, uh, in place of, of, you know, eavesdropping or, you know, more intelligence gathering, that's raising eyebrows within the European community and specifically the UK. Am I right in saying that? It's true that there's a balance that needs to be reached. People are very aware of the threat level, which is the second highest it can be in this country for a terrorist event. The only way it could be higher is if there was intelligence of a known specific attack. And as a result, there's a desire to have law which allows uh, police and intelligence services to monitor more communication between people so that they can thwart any upcoming attacks. However, civil liberties campaigners and people who want to protect their own privacies are adamant that this shouldn't be allowed, even in the name of increased security. So you're right, all these issues get really to the core of some very central ideas of what British people and European people think of basic freedoms and how we balance those with the need to increase security for protection so that events like those happening across Europe don't spread into the UK and don't spread elsewhere across Europe. Sounds like the United States because when, what we're discussing here right now is not something that's going to happen overnight clearly if it's becoming also an internal debate within European countries themselves, de-radicalization and whatnot. I mean, is there an understanding that this is a long process? Well, there's an understanding that it's a long process because it's been going on as long as any of us can remember. You know, people are referring to what happened in Paris as Europe's 9-11. Uh, but in fact, since 9-11, the whole world has been assessing the needs of intelligence against the needs of security. The Western world was attacked on that day, not just the Twin Towers in New York. And it was felt acutely here in Great Britain. I mean, if we think back to how tall buildings and public places were at risk even then, we know that this threat existed for a long, long time. So it's almost uh, a good thing in some ways that this is finally being discussed at, at Europe-wide level and that these 28 foreign ministers who met in Brussels ahead of that summit of leaders on the 12th of February right. and they included Arab League general secretary and all sorts of people who could perhaps help them to come up with a coordinated att uh, attempt to deal with this problem finally. No, definitely. Um, Jonathan Satchadotti, thank you so much for joining us from the UK London today um, about, them, uh, about this important story.